Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll go to Kauai to check out the radar station in Koke'e, do a remote talk show with KIUC, and visit N. Kalamura Farm Enterprises in Lihui. Kauai was, as usual, breathtakingly beautiful. Our trip was funded by the Annie Sinclair Knudsen Memorial Fund through the Hawaii Community Foundation. Our travelers that day were ThinkTech's Eric Kalander and me and Stan Osserman, host of Stan the Energy Man, director of the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, and a retired brigadier general in the Hawaii Air National Guard. From Lihui, we drove to the Hawaii Air National Guard radar station at Koke'e, where Stan and Chief Vance Yamamoto toured us around the station. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii, as you might have seen my shows on Friday. And we're up here at uh, Koke at a very special place uh, for me anyway. I used to be in the Hawaii Air National Guard and we're visiting a radar site that's run by the Hawaii Air National Guard up at the top of uh, the island of Kauai, one of the highest spots on the island. Um, and it's part of the state's air defense system. In fact, it's part of the Pacific's air defense system as you network everything together. The National Guard has a lot of visitors come in and a lot of competition. So behind me are a bunch of plaques and awards um, from visiting units or awards that the site got for doing good work in the federal system. You can see there's a NOAA plaque from the Weather Service and then some uh, other awards, state awards and federal awards that they've gotten. How do you like working up here at Coquet? Well, it's a, it's a beautiful place to work and uh, the, the work is interesting and it's usually not too stressful. So all in all, it's a pretty good job. And so what kind of work do you do? Is it, uh, are you actually on scopes or do you just take care of equipment and things like that? Uh, no, I'm on the radar maintenance team. So we don't actually operate the radar. We don't you know, spend our time checking the targets. We just make sure that the equipment is operational so that the people who are watching the targets have targets to watch. I was a traditional guardsman for the first seven years or so, and then I got a full-time federal technician job in 2001. And then just a couple of years ago, they transitioned all the personnel here at this site to AGR. Okay. Yeah, for, for those that don't know that uh, an AGR is an active duty guardsman, so it's just like an active duty person, except you belong to the guard instead of the active duty. So this unit here has been actually been here since the 1950s, believe it or not. And um, it's part of an integrated air defense system. So back in the 50s, there were actually Army Nike missile uh, launching facilities around the state of Hawaii that were connected in this big system. And this was one of the nodes in that system. Now it's part of the, the nodes in the air defense system that uses fighters to defend the island. So since 1956, the Hawaii Air National Guard has been manning fighters and radar sites in the state of Hawaii to do air sovereignty defense uh, for the state of Hawaii. A lot of people don't realize that our constitution was set up with a lot of checks and balances. Everybody's really familiar with the executive branch, legislative branch, judicial branch. They're taught that in civics in school. But most people don't think about the military. And in the military, um, our founding fathers looked and said, you know, the teachers union never overthrew a country. There was never a coup by the plumbers union. It was always an armed force that took over a government. So when our founding fathers settled how they were gonna set up the military in the United States, they need to balance, you know, and not have a really strong, totally federal force oriented uh, armed folks. So that's why the second amendment talks about a militia, which is really all the civilians, but there's a formal militia um, in every state, in all 50 states, that's called the National Guard. It includes the Army National Guard, the Air National Guard, and in some states, even a Navy National Guard. And those uh, units, uh, particularly the Army and the Air National Guard, are federally funded. So this, this building and all the equipment in it is federally funded equipment. We're talking to Chief Yamamoto, one of my buds from way long time ago from my fishing days over here in Kauai. I see all these awards in the back and I started trying to tell people what they were, but just an idea of what some of these are, are for, visiting units or? Well, back when we were a full-fledged squadron up here, we used to do a lot of exercise and missions with other agencies and, you know, working with some foreign agencies and everything. So with that uh, close-knit uh, exercises, we, we gained friends and, and pretty much a plaque show that, you know, the, the unit as it was did a really good job at it. So. Okay, so the guys over here in Kauai, they keep it a secret, but 
They're like killer fishermen and killer volleyball players. And so as proof of that, I have the trophy case here. It's high tech and there's a lot of electronics here and a lot of functionality and a lot of relevance to um, air defense here in the state of Hawaii. Wouldn't it be a great idea to be in the National Guard? Huh? These guys have a sweet life. If you're going to be in the service, why not have a, a dual service arrangement like this? Is, it sounds like it's better than being strictly state or strictly federal. You get the best of both worlds. Could you give us a little idea of what this PVRA is, does? Well, sir, right now, you know, they installed it. It's a 54 panel. Uh, max capacity is about 15K uh, initial response package. The thing is, it can be packed up on two uh, 463L pallets, aircraft shipping pallets, looking at a three man deployment uh, set up fully operational about 24 hours. That is to give uh, initial power to a bear base site waiting for the follow on forces to get there. So it really isn't specifically for a radar site, it's any initial setup for an initial bear base type site. Exactly, it'll provide power to basically any site. Yeah, I told them I had my military boots on and they didn't oh, okay. believe me. So. And just for the record, mine's the cleanest. Behind us we have um, the photovoltaic array that the Air Force Research Lab brought out here to test as part of a mobile um, power generation system. It's 15 kilowatts, which is 15,000 watts of uh, power at w one time. You would have to attach some storage to it to use it at night or whatever. But this basically boosts the power and gives them immediate power when they need it up to 15 kilowatts. Two different uh, systems. More, one here right behind us is the more rigid, sturdier, traditional, traditional system. Uh, the other side is the Armageddon panels, a little more flexible, a little more durable. Um, it can take direct impact and it should still keep function. Hold, still function as advertised. Um, there should be no uh, depletion in energy intake or output due to dust, dirt, clouds. So that's why Koke is a good uh, site for the testing because of the ever-changing climate and weather conditions. Then we drove back to Ele Ele, where Stan did his Friday Energy Man talk show by remote. His guest, also by remote, was Brad Rockwell of Kauai Energy Utility Co-op, K-I-U-C. Today's show is all about uh, looking at a utility grid that's, I want to say, pretty unique in the whole wide world. Um, over here in Hawaii, we have um, Hawaiian Electric running most of the grids in the state of Hawaii, but we also have one island, and it happens to be the island that King Kamehameha never really captured because he couldn't get his canoes over here without sinking his fleet. He lost half his fleet on two tries and gave up trying to take over the island of Kauai. So the, the folks here on Kauai are really independent and they have their own independent power source now and it's Kauai Island um, Utility Co-op. Can you tell us some of the challenges you have working with the utility scale operation that has this much intermittent renewable in it? You know what I mean? A lot of people can't appreciate the, the challenges there because you not only have to be able to carry the average load of the, the systems on your grid, but you have to be able to have the spikes and the, the peaks and valleys and keep everything smooth because your customers demand good power and you're obligated under as a public utility to give them good power. But I know that's pretty challenging. Could you explain some of those challenges? Yeah, I'll do my best, Sam. The, the challenges are, are a few different um, can kind of be spoken down in a few different areas. The first is the intermittency of a resource like solar and wind. You know, for solar specifically, uh, here in Hawaii, we get typical trade wind weather. Clouds are always moving across, the, uh, you know, between the sun and the solar panels, and so it's causing large swings in the power output of these uh, solar panels and these utility-scale solar farms. And so that basically, that moves frequency around all day long on the grid. So we have to mitigate that variable frequency in order to deliver good power uh, to our customers. Supply and demand, just balancing out all these, you know, this excess of resources, if you will, of supply assets and with our demand at every second of the day and making sure that if we have an excess, we're appropriately storing it while we're curtailing as necessary and we're managing all those assets. I tell you what, we're coming up against uh, our end of our time here, but I really, really, really want to thank you for being flexible today. This has been a, a real adventure for uh, all of us over here in Hawaii, trying to pull out everything together. We spent the morning up at Coquay at the radar site talking to those folks. 
So thanks again, Brad. And um, I definitely want to have you back on the show sometime when I'm more settled down and less hair on fire. And I uh, get to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the future of um, Hawaii Island uh, Energy Co-op. So thanks, the utility co-op. So thank you so much for your patience. And uh, we'll be talking to you sometime in the future. Yeah, sure thing. Let's do it again. Thanks, Dan. Kauai is considered by many to be one of the best places on earth to live. Sustainability is considered a requirement, and it's the only Hawaiian island to have its own electrical co-op. But Kauai is much more than clean and green. It's country, and it's friendly, and moves at an enviable easy pace. Kauai has one of the most advanced renewable energy grids in the U.S., with two huge solar and battery facilities, among other things. It also has some of the best and most friendly transportation infrastructure, giving residents and visitors alike many choices when moving from place to place. Then we drove back to Lihui to meet Ed Kawamura of N. Kawamura Farm Enterprises, an enlightened and multi-generational equipment and feed supply business in Lihui. We toured his shop and said hi to some of his family and customers. We met Ed at the SBA awards ceremony in Honolulu the week before, when both Kawamura Farm Enterprises and ThinkTech received awards. Great family-owned company, long-time business, three or four generations, always giving back to the community. Up until uh, the time that Pearl Harbor got bombed, it was a Japanese school. So after December 7, 1941, they closed the Japanese school and we became a military headquarters. September of 1945, it became my kindergarten. <laughs> and, and, and then... You were in kindergarten then? Yeah, All I, right. came, I came here in kindergarten. And uh, I guess he stayed here till about the, the 50, late 50s, and the school moved. And then uh, my father started the business, uh, you know, right around the, the 60s there. He ran the business, and then I retired from the military in 78, came back here. Uh, and I said, I want to help my dad. And so here I am, you know, giving back to the, uh, the community. You know, it's something that uh, I grew up with from my uh, grandparents folks, you know, they came from Japan and, and uh, they grew rice. So uh, they taught me all the old traditions of the Japanese, right? You're here shopping, what are you shopping for? Well, I always get uh, all my equipment um, worked on here. I buy my equipment here. We have, you know, five acres. And right now I'm, I bought a bunch of weed cloth and I gotta put it in and I gotta get rid of the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Five acres, and what kind of business? Uh, actually, I own a tiki bar, Tiki Iniki, but I grow a lot of... Did you uh, say Tiki Iniki? Yeah. That's what I thought. Iniki was a hurricane, no? I know, but it also means a pinch or a nip like the pangs of love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you see? <laughs> they take this here, and they split the, the, the logs to make firewood. We're just getting ready for our lawn and garden power equipment expo. 
What is that? What is that? What is that about? Where is it? Is it here? Yeah. It, it, it's done here in the backyard there, uh, you, as you can see. We have the, a field the, over the, there. The yeah. tent, tent's going up there, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. all this equipment here will be on display out, out there. The idea of sharing the knowledge of quality equipment, state-of-the-art equipment, uh, came to me back, way back when, when we started because you have people buying all this other equipment and, and don't know anything. And yet, uh, the hotel, the tourist industry, they, they want something and they get to get to view it once a year. They get to see the upcoming thing of you know, the state of the art there. Whatever brand you would like uh, that we have here, we have everything from lawnmowers, chainsaws, blowers. We have some battery powered uh, equipment, you know, now with the ecosystem the way they are. Yeah, yeah. This uh, zero turn mower, you know. Zero turn mowers are by far the most popular one now because it, it cuts down in time cutting. So we go to the other side of the shop. This side is the equipment side. The other side is what they call animal feed. You know, we have the chicken, the, the, the sheep, the horses. This is an old faithful hand truck. Uh, I don't know that you ever seen one, but uh, this is older than me. <laughs> you know, but looks like it's going to last forever, actually. Yep, yeah. <laughs> so we have here, on this side of the house, we have animal feed. Uh, chickens, ducks, uh, game cocks, uh, goats, sheep, oh, horses, goat cattle. And, and it, it go as far as having uh, fish food, too. This, this is uh, the idea that we started way back when, when we first started the story, you know, it's about sharing our knowledge of that, right? You know, people come, they're looking for uh, advice and one, so that's what we do. That's three generations that's great. working here. That's great. At one time we had four generations. Well, when my, my, my father passed, you know, he went to three, and uh, hopefully we can get some more get coming up, up the line there. We get a, a teaching of Shinyo En. It's a Buddhist teaching that says, uh, you're on this earth for the sake of others. It's true, doing things for other people that bring joy into your life. And I think that that plays an important role there. And, and I, I'm happy to say that my grandparents taught me the other thing too, uh, which is uh, making a glutinous uh, rice there uh, called mochi rice, you know, where they pound the rice and it, it comes into a a, a ball that New Year's Day rice. New Year's Day rice. <laughs> no matter how much difference you have, when you pound mochi and you pull it apart, it always come back to the middle. And, and that's what you want about family, is having them be the difference, but they're there when the call is come. Turn the key. Okay. Now, break off. Close it up. Now, to go forward, you push forward, you go back, you come here, stop, then you come back, okay? Now, to go to the right, you push the right first, this way here, then, then you go that way there, then, then you push the left, you go straight. This is uh, the pathway. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Great Thank to you. see you today. I'm so glad we connected. Then we drove to the airport to make our flight back to Honolulu. It was a long, lovely, and memorable day kicking around in Kauai. Thanks to Stan for arranging the trip and to Eric for filming it, to Vance Yamamoto for touring us around the Kokei radar station, to Brad Rockwell for doing the remote talk show with Stan to Ed Kawamura for showing us his business, and to the Annie Sinclair Knudsen Memorial Fund for making this trip and this show possible. Want to know more about Kauai? See kauai.gov. Want to know more about the Hawaii Air National Guard? See dod.hawaii.gov slash h-i-a-n-g. Want to know more about KIUC? See kiuc.coop. Want to know more about N. Kawamura Farm Enterprises? See KawamuraFarm.com.
And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends, and some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. Think Tech is a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on Think Tech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. As you may know from our live broadcasting, ThinkTech is now doing its spring fund drive. Please make a donation to help us in our efforts to keep producing this important community content. All you need to do is click the donate button on our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation across our state and wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important ThinkTech episode. I'm Jay Fidel. 
and I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone.